Welcome back everybody and thanks for watching. In this video I'd like to take a look at the comparison of a kinetic splitter versus a hydraulic and there are a lot of videos on YouTube that already do a general comparison of mainly speed of the kinetic splitter versus hydraulic so I thought I'd do something a little bit different here and that's to explore the efficiency of a kinetic splitter versus a hydraulic and that's what we'll be taking a look at. In order to accomplish that we have a splitter on the right which is a hydraulic it's a 35 ton husky with a 12 and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine on your left is the 34 ton rated kinetic splitter it has 75 pound two 75 pound flywheels and it's retrofitted with the three horsepower 196 cc diesel engine that you can find pretty readily available on eBay and Amazon depending on how often the shipments come in but as of the time of this video, they're pretty well available. You can get them somewhere between $250 and $260 shipped to your door. And we'd like to take a look at, does it make sense to put this on and use this splitter over the long term? And when would you actually get a payback on this, depending on how much wood you plan on using? We'll take a look at that and see if it is something that you guys might be interested in. And hopefully you'll have some fun and we'll see some neat results. This video is not brought to you by Schweppes. Our channel only uses the finest products available. Sure, we could have bought the no-name brand and saved ourselves almost 50% off the cost, but we are no dummies. We know the extra money is put to good use paying the highly qualified data collectors, scientists, and mathematicians holding PhDs who carefully develop all aspects of the product and ensure accurate information knowing how important it is to us for the things we consume. Next time you're looking for a container, don't just buy any tonic water, buy Schweppes tonic water. It just makes sense. On one of my other videos I talked about this. You'll see references to people that loosen these nuts on the injector line from the pump to the injector and you can do that, it doesn't hurt anything but it's also not necessary. Once you get the air out of the line to the pump, the pump is a positive displacement pump and once it has liquid in there it will have enough to get by the delivery valve inside the pump and then it has no place to go but up to the injector. And some people then might think well if this is a positive displacement pump why should I have to bleed it at all. And the reason is, is because if you leave any air in there, there's a piston in here, much like an engine, a cylinder and a piston. And if there's air in there, when that piston comes up, it just compresses the air and makes a spring out of it. It doesn't necessarily compress it to the level needed to open up the delivery valve. So that pocket of air acts like a spring and it will just sit and the piston will go up and down and that pocket of air stays in there. So you need to get that out so that you have liquid fuel and at that point, because liquids are essentially non-compressible, the fuel will then end up traveling to the injector, past the delivery valve, and you're good to go. And that makes another inconvenient step for these diesels when you run them out, but it's just part of owning one. And all you're looking for, again, is just to bleed it enough so that all the air is out of the line, and then you can tighten things up fill the line from the pump to the injector and you should be good to go. In order to fill the line from the pump to the injector, I usually set the speed 
all the way up for the governor spring just to ensure that every revolution I'll get a full stroke of the injector pump into the line and from what I've looked at earlier it takes about six or seven poles to do that just hold op open the valve and release the compression and pull it about seven times slowly And at this point, we should be able to start it up. I am going to set the governor spring down just a little bit. Let's see where we're at. All right, we're good to go. We won't run any more than necessary just to maintain as much fuel as possible and we'll start splitting wood. through a liter of fuel on the gasoline engine which is no surprise and now we will just continue to split here and we'll fill that one up because we really don't care how much it takes anymore we just want to get the job done we'll continue on running the kinetic until the liter of fuel is out and see how far we get looking at the piles we're at least double the amount of wood split so far on the kinetic versus the hydraulic and we still got fuel left to burn. All right, so what we ended up having here is pretty much a half rack. If you count the very far right, we cut a little bit with a diesel kinetic, and we'll call that a half rack if we mix that together on the one on the left. The one in the middle is a complete rack done. So therefore, we did about a rack and a half, which is about a quart and a half per liter of diesel fuel, compared to about an eighth of a quart with the gasoline hydraulic 35 ton so very contrasting differences between the two and we'll take a look at the numbers next and what sort of payback we can expect depending on the number of cords that are cut at the time i bought fuel for the test i was paying three dollars and 28 cents for regular gasoline and three dollars and 34 cents per gallon of off-road diesel that's a good rule of thumb you should be able to get those two fuels for roughly the same cost of course that's not always going to be the case sometimes if you're if times are in your favor for owning a diesel you can get on-road diesel for at or below the price of regular gasoline but in general they should be pretty close for the off-road and regular unleaded gasoline just putting together some numbers here and what you can see if we use a hundred chords I had to define a chord as one because that's an undefined term in MathCAD but I like to use MathCAD because it keeps track of units if they're defined so putting the values in for the fuel cost 334 per gallon of diesel fuel 328 per gallon of gasoline regular unleaded gasoline the efficiency of the hydraulic is 
what we saw one eighth cord per liter I believe in most cases you're gonna do better than that but that's just what we saw I'm just using what the numbers that we have the efficiency for the kinetic is one and a half cords per liter and if you run 100 cords through both both of those splitters you're looking at a about a difference of 600 and say $35 or so somewhere around there now I understand 100 cords is an awful lot to put through and we're talking full cords here the full 128 cubic feet of wood but it gives you an idea of how long your payback will be if you if you buy a kinetic splitter and, and retrofit a diesel engine on it last thing I'd like to take a look at is I had an opportunity to get a thermal imaging camera and we took a look at each splitter as you can see the hydraulic splitter has a lot more opportunity to liberate heat which of course is where you're losing a lot of your efficiency through the ram also the hydraulic reservoir which is underneath the engine and of course the engine itself you'll notice that the temperatures in general are a lot higher for the hydraulic splitter versus the kinetic which we're switching to now on the kinetic there's just a lot less area that's showing signs of temperature rise and with that the temperatures are in general lower engine exhaust of course is similar on both units but much smaller footprint for heat to be liberated therefore your resulting efficiency is higher with the kinetic all right just to wrap things up hope you guys enjoyed the video you found something that was interesting one of the things that you might ask after you watch this video is really how much difference does the diesel engine make over the gasoline on the kinetic splitter and i'm not going to test that mainly because i don't have another kinetic with a gasoline engine but in general if you look at some of the older technology which is what i would consider this compared to the older technology gasoline engines that are carbureted you can usually expect to see about a 50 percent gain by using a diesel engine and a lot of that savings is not only in the higher overall running efficiency but also in the fact that the diesel engine doesn't have throttling losses at low load and one thing you'll notice if you run a kinetic splitter is that once it actually makes the pass through the wood and the flywheels come up the engine's essentially idling at that point for a gasoline engine that means the throttle's closed and you'll get a lot more pumping losses that way so i wouldn't be surprised that you would see a 50 percent increase for a co comparable sized gasoline engine on here and if that's something you really want to pursue i would recommend see if you can find a couple splitters or do a couple tests if before and after you retrofit it and see if that that's about what you would get as a efficiency advantage with a diesel with that thanks for watching hope you guys found it fun and i'll try and catch you guys again on the next video hopefully we can continue to do videos like this always looking for suggestions on what people do with these diesel engines and if you have any of those put them below or any things that you'd like to see potentially tested i'd be willing to take a look at it and maybe we can put it to test so thanks again and we'll see you next time